hurling final day and we just want to welcome listeners on shortwave who've joined us a few minutes ago uh, that's listeners anywhere in the world because literally on shortwave we are going out to north and central america australia africa the middle east and eastern europe and of course as usual on fm medium wave and on the astro satellite uh, again all over the world so wherever you're listening to us we're very very happy to have you with us here at croke park we're about six minutes uh, away from the throw-in here i see uh, mary robinson just uh, coming back into the stand having been introduced to the players wearing a, a very neutral red and white today uh, the president so we're getting very very close to the start of the game everybody's getting excited and I'm sure Michal O'Murahertig is as well yes indeed Gormila Mahagut Khan and what a magnificent sight as the Green of Limerick line up behind the Artane boys band young and old in the band there and the purple and gold of Wexford and they'll be led by their captain Martin Storey a magnificent sight indeed with Hill 16 people by Wexford people with their colours of the purple and gold while the area behind the canal goal is all green and white, the green and white of Limerick. The biggest day in the hurling year, the day of the All-Ireland final, this year the Guinness final, Limerick and Wexford they're true to that final. They met in finals twice in the past. In 1910, Wexford beat Limerick seven goals to six goals and two points in a year of objections. In 1918, it was Limerick 9-5, Wexford won three. The year of the big national bout of influenza, when Wexford indeed offered to walk over to Limerick, but sporting day, Limerick wouldn't accept it, but they eventually won it 9-5 to 1-3. This is 1996, won apiece so far. Limerick going for their eighth and Wexford going for their sixth. As they follow the Artane boys' band, we'll begin with the team nearest the canal right now, and that's Wexford, led by their captain, their centre-forward, Martin Storey, from Owlert the Ballot. Behind him, goalkeeper Damien Fitzhenry from Duffley Rovers, and behind him, the full-backs, Colin Kyo of Halfway House, Bun Clody, Ger Cush of Nevena, and John O'Connor of St Martins. Behind them come the half-backs, led by Rod Guiney of Ratnure, Liam Dunt from Owlert the Ballot, we should have Sean Oak flood of Club On, but poor old Sean Oak, he came out for the team photo, unfit to play, and back at half-back goes Larry O'Gorman of Faith Harriers. In the centre of the field, Adrian Fenlon of the Rapparees, and the great George O'Connor of St Martins will partner him in the centre of the field. Half-forward for Wexford, Rory McCarthy of St Martins, Centre forward Martin Storey, who's leading them, and left half forward Larry Murphy of Club On. The full forwards are Haven of Edisha from Liam Mellows, it's Eamon Scallion. In the centre is Gary Laffin from Glyn Barn Town, and top of the left, Tom Dempsey of Buffers Alley. And they are the men of Wexford as they parade in front of the new stand on the far side of the field. Next to me come Limerick, who've already broken away from the parade. They were led by their centre-half back from Partick's well, Kieran Carey, the captain. Behind him, Joe Quaid from Fiona. Behind him, the full-back, Stephen McDonough from Brewery. Full-back, Mike Nash of South Liberties. His younger brother, Declan Nash, naturally from the same club, has left full-back in the Limerick team. Right half-back for Limerick from Kilmallock, David Clark. Ilar Beale, as I've already told you, Kieran Carey from the well, and left half back up the road in a day of the youthful 20 year old Mark Foley. Ilar Naparki, Gallimerick, Mike Hulhin of Kilmallock, and Sean O'Neill of Moreau Boher. The half forward, some Gary Spillane, Frankie Carroll. In the centre, the captain of 94, Gary Kirby from Partick's Well. Barry Foley, the youngest player in the field at 19, he's at the left half forward position. The massive musicians. Young and old parading in front of the railway goal. Wexford still marching with them, and we look upon the three Limerick full forwards. The man that was doubtful with an ankle injury, the right corner man, Owen O'Neill of Moreau Boher. In the centre, Damien Quigley from the Piercy. And number 15, for Limerick, TJ Ryan, the 22 year old from Gary Spillan. Well, they're the teams that will play the All-Ireland final beginning at half past three under the whistle of Pat Horton and Pat Horton is an awfully man. Well, a wonderful year for Harling from start to finish. When the year began, the men of Clare, well, they were the All-Ireland champions, but then in that wonderful match and that wonderful clinching point by Kieran Carey, it took all the titles away from Clare 
as Limerick marched on to take the Munster title. Excitement in Leinster as well, as Wexford started out by beating Kilkenny, then beating Dublin and beating Offaly, and in the All-Ireland semi-final, Limerick beating Antrim and Wexford beating Galway, and that brings us here today. And we know that we have listeners all over the world, special people in Camp Shamrock and Tiprin in the south of the Lebanon. They'll all be listening in the South Fall to Roy. I'm told that the 79th Battalion in Hadar to Barashit, they'll be cheering for Gary Laffin. I'm told that 83-year-old Wexford woman Nell Delaney of Auckland, New Zealand, is listening out there, as is Sister Rita McCarthy, 102 years of age, from County Limerick, listening in New Zealand, as is our good friend Oliver Lee. Peart in a Wilshiv, Tafal Jeroiv. The All-Ireland final, the minor game was drawn between Tipperary and Galway. The senior game about to start in about two minutes' time. Limerick won the toss and decided to take the advantage of the breeze and play down towards the... No, they're playing down towards the canal goal. They did win the toss and uh, Kieran Carey is defending back in the 50-yard line. Limerick will be playing down towards the canal goal in the first half and that's where the bulk of their followers are. The Artane Boys Band, well, the senior band was formed a few years ago and on big occasions they join up with the normal band to entertain the people here where they're now calling the people to attention for our own of Ian and All-Ireland final day. with this great occasion in any way. The band shortly will begin their march off the field, leaving the field to 30 men fit and ready for the fray. 30 men, and they'd all been the age category described one time by Murisho Sullivan of the Blasket Island as Fehebli and Fuivlau, the 20 years between 20 and 40, when you're in full bloom of health and everything like that. Well, that's the type of men that are out on the field today. Limerick slightly the younger team, averaging 25 years of age, is against 26 and a quarter for the Wexford men. That won't matter much. First time the McCarthy Cup was played for 1921, won by Limerick, captained by Bob McConkey. It's on the All Ireland final of 196. Stalemate with Wexford attacking the ball, picked up by Mark Foley of Limerick. The first strong puck from Mark Foley, straight out over the sideline. Inside the 50-yard line, the new stand side of Croke Park, a line ball coming up to the Wexford men. The cornerback, Colm Kyo, will take it, or will Dave Guiney uh, go back? Rod Guiney go back to take it. Yes, Rod Guiney will go back to take it about eight yards back behind the 50-yard line. It was eight yards. He's brought it down to about six yards behind the 50-yard line. The pitch in perfect condition. It's a dry day between dull and bright, ideal for the game of Harling as Rod Guiney sends it past the centre of the field. Blocked by Mike Holland, but whipped on down there and blocked by Larry Murphy. Larry trying to start running up towards the 50-yard line. Looking now, still Larry Murphy, and Larry Murphy strikes in the ball. It's gone over the ball, the opening score of the game. Larry Murphy of club on, won it 60 yards out and went 40 yards with the ball and shot it over the bar. Colleen on the luck Arman, no score for the Limerick men yet and Wexford playing with the breeze in the first half and a puck out coming for Joe Quinn.